So before DNA technology was around, Ivan Van Sertima took a group of black folks down to the Mexico area to take a look at these Omic heads in San Lorenzo and the other sites that we had. Like I said, this was several years before DNA was a thing. He alleged that this site was of African origin. He claimed that Africans came over here and sailed and even wrote, wrote a book about it titled They Came Before Columbus. All of this was based on collections that he saw from a book titled Unexpected Faces in Ancient America by Alexander von Wootenau. Okay. Now, Alexander von Wootenau wrote this book and he was alleged to have a lot of artifacts. So this sp spoke sparked the interest in uh, in Ivan. So he took a, gr a group of people down to Mexico and I found the clip for it. I can't play the whole clip as, in its entirety because of uh, copyright issues and stuff. So I'm going to stop this clip. OK, but at this uh, function in Mexico, even Alexander von Wooten explains to the Negroes in the audience that they're not Negroes. OK, he clearly says that they painted their faces black. We hear a lot of this in the ancient um, culture. Aztecs painted their faces black. The Mayans painted their faces black, you know, and the indigenous and the, the indigenous uh, painted their faces black as well. But I'm going to play this video again. This is from the early 19 or the late 1900s. I apologize. This is from the late 1900s. I want you guys to listen to this audio. You make no mistake, there is no studio in the world where you will find such a collection of African physical types. Now, right there, that guy with the silver hair, that's Alexander Von Wooten. They're all in this area looking at his quote unquote private collection of artifacts, right? And they're discussing um, these artifacts. You got Ivan right there. If you can see from a distance, Ivan's from a distance too. So like I said, I'm gonna try to stop this video because uh, I don't want to get in trouble for copyright. In ancient America, many of you have not had the opportunity to examine closely at leisure all the pieces in that collection. It is a priceless collection. And many of you have raised the question which must be pursued, what will happen when von Wutenow, who is now 84, dies. Okay, so again, von Wooten, okay, this is all based on von Wooten's collection. <laughs> all right, I'm going to fast forward this tape here, and von Wooten is going to talk for himself about these, these uh, Olmec collection faces. Because the likelihood is... Hang on is that all of these marvelous pieces which we have seen a catalog of everything he has Negroid. Was it paint? oh here we go sorry i gotta chop this up this is uh alexander von wooten explaining to these negroes that they're not negroes they painted themselves black he's he's showing you with his hand gestures right here but let me see if i can back this up and his his features are total black. They're not Negroid. His features are totally dark. He is not Negroid. He said this way back in the day. And somebody in that room thought that he said that they were Negroes. And that's where all of this misconception came from, right out of this room. But they paint them, paint them with chapapote. They paint them faces with the charcoal. They, you read this in history. The natives painted themselves all the time with paint. So it is a warrior who is black. That they painted themselves to look like a warrior that is black. They're not black people. Don't confuse black people with black paint is what we're talking about, family. That is also an atavismo because they knew that the Olympics were black. You're saying that the old Mac people themselves were black? No. No. <laughs> Look at the brother in the black in the back. So you're saying that the old Mac people were black? He said no. He, he said no. 
Did y'all hear that? He said no. Let me fat. Let me um keep going here. The proofs I had. This is a figure made that is between the Olmec period and the Totonac period, transition period. And this is an Olmec sculpture. And to be black, they covered it with tar. To be black. You understand? To be black, they covered their faces with tar, is what this, this man is saying. They're not saying that they were Negro. They have Negro features based on the painting of themselves. That's why they have these features, is because of the paint, is what he's trying to explain to these brothers and sisters back in the 1900s. You see, it's a stone head, but it's covered with this tar. It's a stone head covered with tar. So not only the features and the thick lips come out, but it is made black. It is made black. They they made them look that way. All right. That's what we're talking about, family. Okay. So Ivan got this all wrong. Okay. Ivan took that information wrote a book called um, They Came Before Columbus, The African Presence in Ancient America. Like I said, this is before DNA technology came out. All right. Now, let's fast forward to 2020, 2020, right? February the 10th, 2020, we have um, archaeological evidence from a burial site in the uh, Mesoamerican area. The Olmec heads are Mesoamerican. Um, archaeologists and Cyphers and her collaborators have con uh, conducted modern mitochondrial DNA studies that verified identity. Okay. This is a team of, of folks that went down to these ancient burial sites of the Olmecs. Okay. And they did some real research. They didn't go down there and take pictures and just look at some stuff like Ivan did. That's That was Ivan's mistake. He went down there and he wasn't really critical at this research. In this study, it concludes, it says, quote, we obtain the haplogroup of these two subjects and learn that they belong to haplogroup A, one of the most abundant um, uh, among the founding of the indigenous populations of America. If they had been Africans or black, the haplogroup would be the L, okay? Africans carry the L haplogroup, L0, L1, L2, and L3, which is the characteristics of the population of that continent, he said. If there was African genetic material in the Omex, it would not only be seen in burials, but also in populations that would genetically impact later populations and the haplogroup l which was not found here would have been preserved in 300 mesoamerican burials from different areas there is no l group cypher says so this concludes the study this is full circle all right we went from ivan van Sertima, right coming out with this book before DNA. They weren't at an ancient burial site. They, they basically went down there on a field trip and they just looked at these stone figures and they said, you know what? They look just like us. That's a nose. You know what I'm saying? Those lips, they look just like us. But what they failed to do scientifically was actually take your, roll your sleeves up, get in that dirt and examine those ancient artifacts. When they examined those ancient artifacts in 2020, this ain't the 1900s no more, family. We're in 2020. And they concluded that the mitochondrial DNA with the Omax are A. Okay? Ivan was wrong when he wrote this book, family. He was dead wrong. Again, he got this information from this uh, Alexander Von Wooten. Alex Von, even Alexander Von Wooten. In that video I showed you guys, said that that is not black people. That's black black paint. And you heard the brother. So they. So you mean they were black black people? No, he clearly said no. All right. 
So genetically speaking, right? Genetically speaking, the Omex burial site, right? Haplogroup A, case closed. There's no, well, they look like black people. No, DNA don't lie. Men lie, women lie, and a lot of your grandmothers be lying too. Check that video out, all right? So if you love history, culture, and greatness, you are in the right spot. If you hate misinformation and disinformation, you're in the right spot too. Please watch my last video. I hope you guys are doing all right. I'm going to go. I will be back to see you later, family.